I don't know if I'm going to add this on to that Rachel Maddow piece or not, but this is an example of the people voting for Donald Trump. Now, the all of these people are uh, being interviewed and at, basically asking, uh, asked who they're supporting. They're all going to be Trump supporters. Then the interviewer is basically going to uh, explain to them that uh, Donald Trump is being uh, supported by David Duke and the KKK, and does that uh, change their minds? And to a person, not one of them uh, is appalled uh, uh, by the endorsements. It, it, it just tells me that uh, as much as they want to claim that the country's post-racial uh, uh, and, and not uh, as bigoted as it was uh, before the 1960s, that's basically just not true. So here we go. in Valdosta, Georgia, ahead of the big Donald Trump rally there tonight. Uh, joining us now is Elise Jordan. She's an NBC News and MSNBC political analyst, a former senior policy advisor to the Senator Rand Paul campaign, uh, and a legitimate born and bred Mississippian. Uh, Elise, it's great to see you. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Um, so I think that the Republican Party, by stacking the primary so that stuff got decided earlier, and simultaneously putting a whole bunch of southern states at the start of the primary process might have created this situation inadvertently but they may have created this situation that we're having in the trump campaign right now a, a little bit um uh, by their own means well it's ironic that this was done for Mitt Romney and to help Mitt Romney on some level back in 2012 and you know there was back then I remember in Mississippi hearing some people say like oh Mitt Romney's you know the Mormon question was huge in that election and now you look at this year how it's just come back to really bite the party and then is the tw is the rule going to hold say this broker convention scenario rule number 40 and in 2012 it meant that a candidate had to have won eight states to even have any possibility to go through this broker convention scenario. Who knows if Rubio and Cruz will ever even come close to that. So it's just bizarre how this year has really broken literally every rule in the book. And the, I mean, that issue about the convention, it's, it doesn't have to be a brokered convention. It could just be yeah. a contested convention. The way that uh, NBC's first read does the delegate math right now is they say basically Donald Trump absolutely can lock up the nomination before the convention. He's won three out of the yeah. first four states. He's going to run the table tomorrow with the exception of Texas. Um, he's, you know, by March 15th, he could be well on his way to having enough delegates to win the nomination. There's nobody else who has a chance to do that. Yeah. Anybody else will have to win by going into the convention with nobody having clinched the deal and then it gets decided at the convention. What kind of incentives does that create for the rest of the primaries? 
Well, I think also the Republican Party establishment really has this fine line to navigate of not alienating Trump supporters who are going to be a huge part of the overall turnout. So yeah. what does that do to the other races? Is it better to just, oh, let Trump, Trump will get the nomination and just not be perhaps as supportive or, uh, and, you know, and hope that he doesn't do as well just because of what it'll mean for the party long term? I mean, I personally think he will destroy the party. But these are very tenuous balances to, to strike. And then I don't know if you saw the story about the RGA call this morning, but the Republican Governor Association, they did a conference call this morning with all the governors, and Governor Martinez was on the call, and she was encouraging uh, non-endorsement of Trump, whereas Chris Christie outlined the reasons he was supporting Trump. So this is just going at all levels of the party. There's a furious debate over Trump and what he means to the longevity of the Republican message. The Now, okay, take into consideration the KKK and David Duke uh, situation arose over the weekend. Chris Christie was aware of uh, the endorsement. Chris Christie's staying on board with Donald Trump, and he's pushing Donald Trump in front of the, uh, the Republican uh, May, uh, Governors Association. Where does Chris Christie lie in all this, given that racists are uh, pumping up and pushing up Donald Trump? Anybody want to uh, guess uh, which way uh, he's leaning as well? New York Times also reported this weekend on a remarkable, just a jaw-dropping plan uh, that's apparently been hatched by Senator Mitch McConnell. He's got to worry about his majority in the Senate, right? And there's a bunch of vulnerable Republican senators who are up for re-election. And apparently the plan, at least according to the New York Times, is that vulnerable Republican senators, or maybe all Republican senators, with the exception of Jeff Sessions, will not only divorce themselves from Donald Trump stylistically and in terms of endorsements and things like that, but they might in their own Senate re-election campaigns, run negative ads against Donald Trump, try to defeat Donald Trump, consider it as a given that he will lose, and essentially try to talk voters into electing a Republican Senate as a counterbalance to Hillary Clinton. That sounds too clever by half to me. It just seems too difficult considering that so far today Donald Trump was supposed to be the one month summer fling and look at where he is now. I just I can't believe we're you know, end of February, at this time last year, Senator Rand Paul, who I worked for this year, was leading the polls. His message was one of bringing in people to the Republican Party, of not alienating them, of bringing in you know, people who were concerned about criminal justice reform, going and speaking at University of California in Berkeley and appealing to privacy advocates. And it really, that was absolutely not the message that resonated this primary season. It's, 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 it's very dark and depressing to me. Well, uh, maybe it's always darkest before the dawn. Other pablum, that means nothing. That might make you feel better. <laughs> At least, Jordan, thank you so much. It's really good to have you here. Thank you. Donald Trump may accomplish something that no other group uh, was able to do. Donald Trump may single-handedly be responsible for the total destruction of the Republican Party. God bless him.